Hello guys, my name is Stefan Lutkanov and today I would like to talk about how to teach badminton strokes in general. And the very first thing I would like to say is this is a very important topic, especially when we build up the kids from beginning to the elite level. When we have an elite level player that already has a build up technique, you have to really much communicate and think uh, what exactly will change because if you're going from the foundation you would a lot more likely change everything and uh, sometimes that's a very very hard thing for any kind of a decent player and especially elite players. Now um, when we talk about badminton strokes first we have always to agree about what exactly badminton stroke consists of. So in normal, uh, normally we'll talk about starting position or common starting position for uh, for the whole corner. So like example I'm in the uh, backhand net corner or I'm at the overhead net corner uh, for overhead rear court corner and I have a common starting position or I'm at the forehand rear court corner or forehand net corner or defense or whatever is the topic so we have a common starting position and then of course we have backswing until the end of the backswing then of course we have forward swing until the time of impact then we have time of impact uh, and then we have follow through there's some more parameters that we have to consider. This is the very basics. Like in the beginning, when we teach the kids, what we really care about is that they have a really proper movement towards the shuttle, then they hit the shuttle, then they have a proper rotation. Like example, I'm very careful of uh, not over rotating or not over extending the elbow, but I want to extend and rotate and hit at the same time. So then of course, uh, the first really big step that we talk about in the foundation level one is uh, what I call foundation level one, is when we have the proper movement and rotation. Of course, we also have to have a basic grips. And in the, uh, in the beginning, we talk about really basic forehand, basic uh, backhand grip. And in one of my other videos, you can see about uh, my idea about the grip and uh, also build my hand backed up, I'll say like that. Uh, then from, uh, from once we have a proper movement and proper rotation, what we call the kinetic chain, then of course it's very important how we use that. On the first level, when we have the movement and rotation, we don't really care where the shuttle goes, when they're especially very small kids. However, when, we, when the kids grow up and we want to teach them to correct uh, the direction and we start talking about straight lifts or cross lifts or straight pushes or cross pushes, we start, uh, start talking about if the time of impact is here, like estimated time of impact, then where do we put the backswing so actually we can make the cross? So where do we put the backswing or the, where the backswing ends so we can actually make the straight lift? And once we start talking about that, then we immediately have to start talking about how do we correct the grip because if I have the same grip, like example, and I can still make the bold lifts with a little adaptation of backswing, I would not have, I would not be able to do the same with the short crosses, like example, because I have to over preload my wrist. So let's say this is my time of impact and I want to do a push and it comes a fast shot and I want to do a cross, then I have to change the grip. And that immediately answers of when do I change the grip? And this is from the starting position to the backswing, to the end of the backswing. This is my time to adapt and change the grip. A very typical situation in the defense when you open and you have to do everything until you open the racket because this is actually the end of the backswing. So you can perform, like example, short, uh, short net cross defense. And once you change the grip and you end up in a different backswing position, you can perfectly control the movement and the rotation. So we go second step to the first step. That means first step was what? Movement and rotation. Second step is when we're in the backswing, we have to change and adapt the grip according to what we expect the shot to the estimate time of impact and where do we want to play. And then we already know how to adapt it. And then comes the third point, the third really important parameter uh, is how to hit the shuttle exactly. So when we talk about the exact time of impact, then of course, we talk a normal stroke where there is no cuts or no spins or no slides. Doesn't matter how you call them. Uh, then we suddenly start talking about overcutting, undercutting, or we start talking a reverse spin, a normal spin, or at the rear court we start talking about cuts or reverse cut, and of course normal. So in the beginning, we don't involve the though any kind of a cutting the shadow or anything that that involves the spin. But at the end, 
when the kids already have a good movement, good rotation, they can control the back swing, they can adapt the back, uh, the, the grip so they can actually perform the stroke that they want, suddenly it becomes very important that they're also able to control the cut of the shadow or the spin of the shadow. And to control that spin or to reverse the spin, we start talking about the net for the spins, the reverse spin. At the rear court, we start talking about cuts or reverse cuts. In some languages, also slice or reverse slice. And then, as according to the education system, and then those parameters could more likely apply everywhere. I showed you the net, but there is absolutely the same situation in the rear court. Like example, I am in my offensive position towards the net, I make my push step, I turn immediately, and this is my, I would call, co uh, common starting position in the constructive offensive area at the rear court uh, overhead corner. And if I have this common starting position, in the moment when I step, I'll stay, this is my backswing position. In the moment when this is my backswing position, this is my movement and the rotation. And this is where the time of replay, so I have movement and rotation. And in the beginning, it's again movement and rotation. So everything what I carry is nice starting position, movement and rotation. And nice starting position, movement and rotation. But then I start carrying really on the same time of impact, how can I adapt that backswing so I can actually make a, a really cross drop, straight drop, everything, even when I'm under, a little bit under pressure. It's still constructive offensive, I can still attack the shuttle, but I'm not as dangerous if I'm totally offensive because then I will be enough behind the shuttle, so I really wouldn't care that much about changing the grips and everything like that. That becomes even more big issue when we're under pressure in the rear court and we start talking about neutralization or in the defense under pressure because these little things about adapting the backswing and, and, and adapting the grip in the backswing, it becomes vital. So I'll summarize now and I hope it becomes a little idea about what is important. The first step, really big level, level foundation level one, is movement and rotation. Direction is not important. Uh, time of impact has to be fixed normally and that's typical for the small kids. A second thing, it becomes, direction becomes really important. We add the direction and to add the direction and also the height, the trajectory, we start adapting the backswing. So we start talking, where is the backswing for the straight? Where is the backswing for the cross? And when we do that, some of the strokes will require that we rotate that grip a little bit or adapt at least the finger a little bit. And when we do that, then we talk about adapted backswings and rotation of the grip. And the third thing is that when we already have adaptation backswings and we can hit clearly the shuttle with movement and rotation, we create the spins of the net and we create the record all the cuts and all the variations. Now, some of you may ask, why exactly do we create the cuts at the end? Because I have seen many coaches starting with the cuts in the beginning with the idea to move the, to teach the movement and the rotation. My personal experience is, I'll say negative when I start with the cuts and I have done that one many, many years ago, is when the kid starts um, having a cut or they create a like, example, or only cut that way, only cut that way, they start mistaken the grip, uh, the, the rotation with a cut, so especially small kids. And what is very typical for them is that they start rotating uh, the racket in the fingers. And uh, that's another philosophy should we teach a finger power at the beginning and all this stuff. But I leave it now and I'll say that I will personally teach the cuts in the last one with the idea to have exactly the motor control the really nice kinetic chain, which is the movement, really nice control of the, of the rotation uh, and hit it as clearly as possible. When they can do that and they can correct the direction, the height, the trajectory, or everything like that, then it's extraordinarily easy to create the variation in the cut because the kid starts understanding and the youth athlete starts understanding why do they need that. And at that point, it becomes very easy to be implemented. However, on the other side, when we create first the cuts, then we might get in challenge that kids mistaken cuts and rotation and that will limit some of the strokes. They will overcut the clear or they will overcut the, the smash when they want to put a lot of power and they will have a problem with adapting the backswings and the grip towards the backswings. So I hope that video gives you a little bit thinking and uh, provokes you to a new kind of a, a philosophy. I don't think it's a new kind of philosophy, it's actually something I've learned uh, through a lot of different coaches all over the world and I hope you can apply it uh, directly. For more specific things and specific strokes, I'll try to give more specific examples in my next videos. Please subscribe and share. Thank you.